Good morning, fans. Privateer FX. Coming at you on FOMC Day. It's Wednesday, May 3rd. Um, wow. Big day. Um, Going to be super interesting. The obvious decision here for me is not to raise rates um, or at the maximum raise 25 as a token and say we're done. Um, the quickest way to fix this banking crisis, which looks very clear now, clearly not going away, um, is to lower rates, right? All of these portfolios that are underwater because they didn't hedge, every percent that you lower rates, the value of these portfolio goes up, you know, 10 or 15 percent. So uh, it's, I mean, tactically, if you want to save the economy and if you want to save the flow of money, if you want to save credit, you, you have to cut rates. Um, of course, if you take an academic view of all of this, which they might be doing, you're just like focusing on inflation and employment and, and, and inflation's just not going away. So maybe, you know, that's why you're raising, but it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, it's 5.13 right now uh, in in London, so we're a ways from the open, 6.13 in, in, in Switzerland. And that means we're 14 fucking hours away from the FOMC. Um, so there's not a lot to do this morning. Uh, I'm going to go over a couple of things that struck me. The first thing I guess you can see here is uh, Icon Enterprises. You know, for those of you who have been around as long as I've been around, you know, I started, uh, started in this game in 1992. Um, you know, Carl Icahn has been, uh, you know, sort of a heroic villain uh, in the industry, in the business, s f since I can remember, right? Just um, strong-willed, uh, fuck you, old school, originally trader and then investor, and, and um, <laughs> so... Seeing him get kicked so squarely in the balls uh, made me wince, um, as I'm a fan of this guy and, and the way he throws down bets and and sticks to his guns. I don't trade like him. I I got nothing to do with what he does. But um, man, twenty twenty bucks nose to toes, really almost twenty five bucks nose to toes off of his close end fund here. Traded down to 37. Um, I would not bet on um, Hindenburg burying Carl Icahn. <coughs> so, um, in fact, we're, you know, we're going to bet on the opposite, right? So we're going to be fishing. We'll be on the bid for IEP. Um, probably between, well, not probably, between sort of 38 and 28. Um even if he does cut the dividend, you're still probably going to be making 10% um, as this has repriced, right? So if he cuts the dividend in half to a buck, um, you know, at 40, you you still have your 10% carry. And again, this is just not a guy, um, not a guy you want to bet against, right? Um, that said... I would have said the same thing about the guys who ran Bear Stearns and, you know, Dick Fold also. I would have said that about, he obviously ran Lehman. The problem with Icon, very much, very similar to Dick Fold at Lehman, is tons of fucking people hate this guy. Um, you know, the, his public fight with Bill Ackman and everyone saw that. So... I don't know. Are there are there some nefarious forces who want to bury this guy? Yes, um, but is he buryable? I don't think so. Anyway, there's my rant on IEP. Let's go to FX, uh, which is what we do for a living, and which was what is responsible for everything I've ever made um, in my life. Uh, let's start with dollar yen. We talked about it yesterday uh, on Twitter. It looked like dollar yen was getting shaky there. Um, 137.30. We sold a bit there, uh, so that was good. And we actually just cleaned that up here um, 
at 08. We'll be reselling up at 55 and 85. You know, I think the trade today is if he does raise 25, he's just sell the crap out of the dollar bounce. Um, there's just a trillion reasons, 31 trillion reasons to sell the dollar. Um, God forbid uh, ECB raises 50 tomorrow. It seems like there's a high likelihood they might. Um, you know, that puts euro at 112. Um, the market is massively short euro yen, um, which also is, I mean, euro yen looks like it's fucked, but if they raise 50 tomorrow, euro yen's going higher, people. Sorry, did that bearish in golf yesterday? No dog in the euro yen fight, but <laughs> kind of did. But I mean, I would be careful with euro yen heading into the ECB. And if you're going to trade this, you want to try and sell this between 152. Uh, well, I mean, 150, 160, and 152, 60. So um, that will be your capitulation um, because positioning right now, the short euro yen trade is, is I think, 90% of retail is short euro yen. So that's a little spooky. Um, would not be short euro yen going into the ECB. If you're going to be short yen cross, which we are, uh, we recommend Aussie Yen. That's a much cleaner candlestick. Um, okay, we we wore a little pain up to 92.45. We sold 12s. We actually didn't have the balls to sell 38s, which was our original plan. Um, but that's worked out just fine, and this is a nice risk-off proxy. Uh, and even if Powell raises 25 and then says we're done for now I don't think that's going to be good enough for risk um, obviously if he doesn't raise it all today US stock market will probably like that a little bit but you just have to consider where rates are and how fucked these banks are I, I printed a screenshot up on Twitter just about you know the, the, the next 30 banks in line um, have a look at that and basically it was an interesting correlation chart uh, that some smart ass, uh, wicked smart guy, uh, put up on Bloomberg. Take a look at that. It just doesn't look good. It just, you know, who's next? Who's up next uh, after First Republic? Who's up next? Who's up next? This is, I mean, there's probably 30 banks that have the same exact portfolio, the same exact business model. Um, so, Anyway, Aussie Yen uh, is your horse if you want to um, you want to be short. Maybe Sterling Yen. Uh, that was just a much more powerful bearish engulf. Um, but uh, Euro Yen, I'd be super careful of. Euro Swiss is a weird one, right? Going into risk off, you're like shit. I should fucking buy some Swiss francs. Mm, not so sure about that. You know, the Swiss franc is super overvalued against so many different currencies. Uh, I had this conversation with um, one of my old business partners on Sunday. Um, if ECB raises 50, Euro Swiss has to go higher. So we actually have some sneaky bids uh, lingering in Euro Swiss, maybe, you know, 98.10, 97.90. If you want to be more conservative, you know, start your bidding at 97.85 um, tonight in the hysteria if he does raise and risk goes off euro swiss may um, take a bit of a digger but we like being long euro swiss going into the ecb tomorrow uh, that's one of our sort of key trades going into um, ecb so this you want to you know you want to look for some hysteria tonight if there is you know, you don't want to fade yen strength, but you do want to fade Swiss strength, not against the dollar, but against the euro. Uh, so that's on our frontal lobe a little bit. The other thing is um, euro sterling. This is a fade um, up towards 89, right? So again, this is for really for tomorrow, but you want to get it sorted in your head. Um, 
ECB goes 50. Great. MPC is just not on the docket this week. But don't forget, their inflation problems are probably the worst of anyone. So they're going to have to, you know, scramble uh, for higher rates. So think about this. Uh, you know, where do you want to buy sterling and against what? Uh, the other one, of course, is buying it against the dollar. Here's your little line here, 124.02. I don't know if we're going to see that, but um, sterling's a decent horse uh, to own against the dollar. Euro, obviously, is a more stable horse. Um, you don't want to own the commodity currencies against the dollar. You don't want to own dollar Swiss because um, it's just too, it's at the bottom of the range, even though it's sitting here, all these dead cat bounces. Uh, and, of course, you don't want to own dollar yen because this is going to be a risk proxy if things go fucking pear-shaped. So cable or euro, pick your horse, try and buy cheap ones. Um, when this week is over and all is said and done, uh, I think the flock is just going to start coming around to what a lot of people have been talking about for different reasons is um, the U.S. dollar kind of has to devalue from here in our minds. Uh, and there's just so many little tiny micro reasons. There's huge macro reasons. Uh, and I'll just leave you with one other anecdotal story. Yes, yesterday in Bloomberg, for those of you who know how to read and read Bloomberg, um, you know, they're talking about Buffett who's piling into these Japanese stocks. And the author of the article is like, do you see, see great value in these stocks? Blah, 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 Mitsubishi and these big super companies in Japan. And somewhere embedded in that article was like, I wonder if he's thinking that everything is 30% off here because he's a dollar-based investor investing in yen. And when dollar yen goes back to 110, he makes a 30% um, scalp on currency re re reval, on the currency reval. And if these super big companies, you know, conglomerates, they're never going to really fall out of bed. Uh, if they do also get a little bit of a Buffett bounce, which they have, um, he wins double. Uh, so you don't really see Buffett trade currencies too often. Uh, and the last time he did this was when he sold the dollar through derivatives, I think in 2005. Uh, that was a direct kick in the ball for the dollar this is more of a sneaky little kick but when you see Buffett doing these things and you see 31 trillion in debt and you see a banking crisis and you see lack of leadership you see Biden Trump two of the biggest Muppets I've ever fucking encountered in a political uh, in a political dogfight it just doesn't look good you know and then you take gun crime and pollution and anger and it's just a trillions and trillions of reasons that the U.S. is going to go into a period of fucked. Uh, and so we just have to think about our horses. Gold is obviously the other horse. Uh, 2017 now, gold. Gold's probably going to go to 4,000. Um, but we have noted in our journal how bad we are at trading gold. Similar to how bad, I guess, you know, similar to how bad we are trading oil. So we stick to the currencies for whatever reason. I mean, the reason is obviously you got your, I've got my 40,000 hours trading currencies. I have traded gold from here and there. The only time I make money in gold is when the market, everyone's long and I know where the stops are and I just fucking leave some stop entries. Um, this is not the case. Everyone is in accumulation mode in gold. Um, any dip which needs to be bought so that that trade's not around when we get to 4,000 I'll start thinking about um, left hand side um, when the last retail guys are, are buying gold at 4,000 for a move to 8,000 um, we'll maybe cherry pick a level for downside gold but gold is a good weapon here um, we like euro I guess maybe because we live in Europe who knows uh, but also sterling, I think, can surprise a lot of people and head back to 145 uh, in the long term. So this isn't 
this isn't specifically what we t how we make our money here, but I'm just talking long term today, and I'm just kind of babbling here because there's no trade at the open here. This is FOMC day. Um, the trade at the open is go get some exercise, go get some fresh air. I'll be out in the mountains um, for lunch today thinking about <laughs> entries and what-if scenarios for Powell. Um, there's no point in getting stuck in uh, to any kind of trade setups going into what is going to be an incredibly interesting FOMC. That's all I got for you, peeps. Talk to you tomorrow. Ciao. Good luck tonight.